All roads lead to the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, even if the roads are filled with traffic. Scenes taken from our Kamal George's just a short while ago headed to South Trinidad. It is the last lap for what is the biggest party in sport. The Brian Lara Cricket Academy is a stage for cricket's carnival showpiece. The Trinbago Knight Riders versus the Guyana Amazon Warriors. Two-time champions versus three-time finalists. Top of the table versus the runners-up. With pre-match pre analysis, captain reactions, and the feel from on the ground, welcome to Match Day Live. I'm Ryan Bechu. There really is no easy way to predict who will be lifting this trophy in four hours. But one sure thing is the best two teams are rightfully in the last match of the 2018 tournament. We're building up to the grand final of the 2018 CPL. Dwayne Bravo's TKR is aiming for a repeat and its third title in this tournament. The pre-match press conference took place yesterday morning. Let's take a little listen in of both captains and what they had to say ahead of tonight's final. Um, yeah, I, I think I think their their reputation speaks for itself. Um, but I think we just we have just a strong reputation, and uh, when you look more relevantly or recently rather at at the stats, we won our last two clashes, so we're we're going to come in just as confident. Both of them, I'm very impressed with and happy. Um, obviously. Um, Forward replaced Shadab Khan, who is a, also world, another world-class player, and a lot of people wasn't sure about forward. But um, this is a guy I played with in Big Bash, and I think um, you know, seeing what he do over the years in the Big Bash in Australia on some really good ba battle wickets, I think definitely coming here in the Caribbean, he's going to be a handful. How key a player is forward Ahmed going to be? You've heard from the skippers, but stick around because coming up very soon, everyone's favorite commentator sits down with the Match Day Live team for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one pre match analysis ahead of the final game. It's showdown at sundown in South Trinidad. Match Day Live is back after this. Welcome back to Match Day Live. I'm here for pre-match analysis. It's the final match of the 2018 CPL TKR versus the Guyana Amazon Warriors. And joining me is a very, very special man and a very, very special guest, internationally famous and internationally loved commentator and analyst, Danny Morrison. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being here. Oh. So you see, this is how different this guy is. You don't <laughs> shake this guy's hand. Welcome back to the Caribbean. What have you made of this year's tournament? I think it's been simply sensational. Uh, Ryan loved it a lot. Um, in terms of the cricket that's being played, and you know, it was going five years previous to this, and now it has uh, become a really renowned T20 franchise tournament that's held in such high regard. And the pitches, the pitches, the 22 yards, I like to call the players' workbench, very important to get that right. And uh, by and large, um, it's been pretty good, and we've seen some fabulous cricket. TKR versus the Amazon Warriors, the 2018 CPL final. Did you see this? Did you predict this? I think a lot of people possibly didn't think the Warriors would probably get up over TKR in that first playoff, one and two playing each other. But my word, hasn't it turned out to be a bit of deja vu from last year where TKR had to go through and play both of the, the, the finals, if you like, to get into the finale? So, um, yeah, interesting, and I think, uh, I think the Warriors at home, particularly in Providence, and that was a nice touch too, I think the, the playoffs going to Guyana and then the actual finale back here. So um, don't be surprised, dear Ryan, you heard it first on your show, mm -hmm. that what about swapping it for next year? You could actually have the semi and the final in Providence and swap it round and do that, so that wouldn't surprise me either. TKR versus the Amazon Warriors. Who has the edge? Amazon Warriors has had a few more days rest than mm. TKR. Is that going to be a factor? I just ran into um, Johan Borta, coach uh, through breakfast, and he said, look, once we got in there and won on Tuesday, so we're now talking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's only four days. And I said, it's not like when Barbados got straight in there and they had to wait seven. So when I look at that, and I, I heard that from him. I said, look, I feel... I feel the boys in red have got the advantage because when you keep playing and keep ticking along and you had that edge of actually playing rather than just going to the nets and doing it, um, no doubt. I think they have advantage because you're playing here in Trinidad and Tobago. 
know, you're playing at the Lara in terms of the hometown support, all that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I fancy them as more as favourites, but I would, and I'm just going to go totally on a limb here, because we love the underdog, we love a new winner. We love a new winner, we want a new winner, so I want the Warriors to win. But the they do have a, a, a very strong team that has really gained momentum. TKR had a fantastic run throughout the round robin stages, but Warriors tended to gain that momentum at the crucial times. Do you agree? Yeah, and I think when you look at the balance of their side, um, there's no doubt that you know these two young guns. And how exciting is that? Oh for yeah, CPL? Shafin Rutherford oh. and Shimron Hetmeyer. You get the two lefties going hell for leather. Local guys from Guyana, born and bred, and doing the job as they are. Um, you know, from another perspective, you'd love Luke Ronke to, you know, suddenly click and gel and, and get his act together for the grand finale. Um, Delport, you know, Cameron, he's another issue, um, another left-hander. So they've got a wonderful balance of that whole thing of a lefty and right-hand combinations. And then when you look a bit further down, um, Chadwick Walton, what a great season last year. He's struggling this season, but he's in a different position. And then, of course, you throw in Imran Tahir uh, and all that experience with Sahail Tanbir. Um, those guys are, are, are very exciting. Uh, and the other guys feed off that, you know, and, and they want to do well. Uh, Ray at Emirate, you know, suddenly lost the captaincy, took over from Shab Malik, and then he became captain, and it wasn't quite working. And just to concentrate more on his own game, and I think that's been a burden off his shoulders for Ray. Uh, so, you know, those guys can be match winners. So, what are you new looking at this? grand final what would you say would be the thoughts in both dressing rooms playing on that weakness of the other team what are those weaknesses that they're going to be talking about well i, I think in a way that tkr's top order while well, they've had a great round robin as you say ryan they finished first uh they've had a couple of hiccups but now they've got into the final um, and mccullum worked hard uh, in that semi-final he worked really hard and he said it was quite difficult to get going um, Munro, you know, he got to 29 and missed out to carry on. Um, I, I wonder too when the players look at it and the teams look at it and say, are we going to play? Are we going to play on a fresh pitch for the final at Lara? Um, it's a 5 p.m. start, so that's a good thing. I don't think the due factor comes in so much uh, as it does with an eight o'clock start. You saw the rags all that, so I think that's fair. I think for a, something like this of a grand finale, you don't want the toss to have a big sway in saying, right, we're going to bowl first because we know the due fact that comes in, ball slides on better, it's harder for the bowlers, radi radi ra. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of them, I think in a final, when it showed last in terms of the semi-final, Ryan, that if you put runs on the board, you can create pressure. So runs on the board, as we all appreciate in the game of cricket, whether it's, you know, 50 over a T20, in a final situation, um, can have a bearing and that those nerves and tension if the bowling side back themselves to strangle the opposition, don't have a choice, do you? Lose the toss, they want to bowl, possibly you wanted to bowl too, but hey, don't worry. Play what's in front of you. You don't have a choice with a toss. It's the luck of that coin toss we know. Get out and do your thing and adapt. As we all know in T20, you've got to adapt on your feet quickly. So I think the point you make about what are the weaknesses I'll play on, I think both sides know that uh, the top order, they would dearly love to get at least two wickets in the power play possibly three in the power play, um, and then it's challenging for the side. When you've lost three inside the power play, we know it's a tough grind. So the final really is the huge focus today, but also, what have you made of the entire CPL this year? The standard of the competition has been six years of CPL cricket. You've been here for the majority of it, if not all. Mm. What have you made of it? I think it's got stronger in terms of uh, the guys of local talent, and it's not just about the superstars of Gale and Lewis had a great time last year. Walton was the, the, the you know the player of the tournament last year. You know Pollard and, and uh, Johnson Charles and Andre Russell and Darren Sammy Ruddy Ruddy. You can go on. Those are the big names. It's the younger guys coming through, and and that's part of why you have these T20 franchise tournaments, IPL, the PSL, you know here the CPL and and the, the Big Bash in Australia. You want to unearth more homegrown talent and I think that's been exciting for me uh, massively and and when you're moving forward um, you do really want these young guys to unearth because I mean Gail and you know and co Darren Sammy Radi Radi Ra can't keep playing forever we can't so you know they're going to finish soon so it's time for more of those guys to be unearthed. Danny I don't, I don't want to just talk about cricket because this is <laughs> hugely important because 
you've got a huge, huge fan base across the Caribbean. You know it. I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> the Caribbean fans love you. Trinidad, Trinbago Knight Riders fans love you. What's it like for you to come to the Caribbean every year and interact? And because you, more than any other commentator, really, you get down into those stands, you meet the people, yeah. uh, the people <laughs> love you, and, and they really appreciate that. Um, and, and look, for cricket lovers and sports lovers in general now watching your show, Ryan, I was very fortunate that my mother came from a, a, a drama and thespian background, so the arts. And so when I was in between playing rugby and a bit of soccer and a bit of cricket, um, I went to a, a, a sort of drama type school, but it was more about pantomime and uh, drama workshops. So I was 11 and 12 and we did pantomime. So it got you out of your comfort zone of being able to express yourself in front of others. And so I think that has boded well for me in terms of doing now post playing stuff and getting out there. Um, I love coming here because it's like nowhere else. It is so unique in terms of the culture with the music, uh, and, and the whole thing about the cricket around it and the whole partying thing, the hashtag, biggest party in sport. But the cricket's really good too. And that was always the that was always the trade-off. Can this really get serious and can it be a power base of quality cricket first and foremost, tagged on, if you like, with you know the Trini Posse and the dancing and the carnival atmosphere and all of that and I think it has and, it, and it's sort of in a way taken a bit of time to to bridge that a bit like you, know, you talk about the IPL powerhouse of Bollywood marries cricket and that whole thing of that and so you can see that and this is just another level of dancing partying party stand music live acts at half time and you know it's, it's a no-brainer for me to embrace it um, I'm more of an extroverted character, clearly, uh, and I like doing what I do. And I'm actually very grateful. And, and as you say, you speak to other guys, humble about it, is that you're very blessed that post-cricket, juggling other things in life, that this whole circuit has come about in the last decade. If you had uh, one final message on the final day of the Caribbean Premier League for 2018 to Caribbean fans, what would Danny Morrison tell them? Their favourite commentator. <laughs> tell, what would you tell them? I say keep loving the game, keep focused, keep coming live, that's the key. Come to it live and experience it all. Get out in the middle and fat it! We're down to the final competition in this contest. In the final match of 2018 CPL, I've got Jassi Marie to my right and Akash Samaru to my left, both sportsmen in their own regards. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yep. Yes, we are. Yes, yes very well. Wow, let's go. First question, 30 seconds on the clock, please. One minute on the clock, actually. This Barbados Trident's bowler is the only bowler in this tournament to take five wickets. Who is he, Akash? That's correct. What is the highest margin of victory in this year's tournament, Jassi? Is it 100 runs? That is correct. This is the St. Lucia Stars TKR. The T this TKR batsman has scored the most half centuries in this year's tournament. Who is he, Akash? Colin Munro. That's correct. How many matches have TKR lost in this tournament, Jassi Marie? Four matches. That is correct. The Jamaica Talawas won the first CPL tournament, but who did they beat in that 2013 tournament? Guyana Amazon Warriors. That's correct, Akash. Final question. He scored 94 not out against the St. Lucia Stars, and it is the highest individual score for TKR. Judges, who is it? Judges, who is it? Both. Darren Bravo. Darren M. Bravo. He got the mic off, so we're going to get... It's a tie. It's three by three. <laughs> this has been uh, slapping sixes My on God. match. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for viewing. When the middle name matters, Jassy Marie just about nicked it. Now, we can tell you down at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy that TKR has won the toss. They're going to bowl first. We have uh, a few giveaways to give away. In fact, I think we just have time for one call, and we've got a call already from Sawa. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon to you, rather. Hi. Good afternoon. Congratulations on winning some TKR merchandise. It's a T-shirt and a signed autograph uh, back from the TKR team. I'm sure that you're backing TKR for this. Do you think we have what it takes to, uh, to, to get over the Amazon Warriors in the final? Yes, I think we do. All right, so we're going to be bowling first. How much do you want to be chasing? 200 and something is good. 200. <laughs> How much I, mean, I don't know if they, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, I hope it's not 200 uh, plus because that's going to be a really, really tall order. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you very much for all of your calls and all of your interaction during uh, this Match Day Live program. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be checking out what you've been saying on social media as we build up to the final TKR versus the St. Lucia. Nope, sorry, that's way off. The Guyana Amazon Warriors at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. We'll be right back. So get up, get up, get up. Welcome back to Match Day Live on CNC3. Just over 10 minutes to go to match time. Let's check out what you've been saying on social media. We asked one simple question. Do you think that TKR has what it takes to retain its title? They're the defending champions. Let's see how much people actually think that we can. Around, whoa, 80% says yes. Uh, 20, just 20% says they don't think that TKR has what it takes. Just some team news as we click, as we quickly toss across to the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Well, Dwayne Bravo is definitely in as skipper. Kevin Cooper is also in there. Sunil Narayan, Colin Ingram retains his place as well. Ali Khan will open the bowling for TKR. So it looks like our A team is actually going to be playing this match. We do hope that you enjoy it. TKR has won the toss. They'll be bowling first. Match time in just about 10 minutes. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we head straight to South Trinidad.